Welcome to Employment Law This Week. I'm George Whipple. Our top story, a health care tax credit for employees can lead to penalties for employers. The federal health insurance marketplace is notifying employers when their employees obtain marketplace coverage and qualify for subsidies to help lower their premiums or deductibles. This can happen if the employer offers health insurance coverage that is inadequate under the ACA or if the business doesn't offer coverage at all. Employers must pay a penalty or file an appeal on the matter. Chris McMikan has more. When they receive a notice like this, the employer should determine if the notice is accurate and whether or not it should be appealed. So, for example, if the employer believes that the individual was not its employee or if maybe the employee was provided with the required health insurance coverage offering at the right price, then this might provide grounds for an appeal for the employer. In that appeal, there's a specific form to follow, and the employer should be aware that this is an appeal to the marketplace, not necessarily the IRS, which is a later step if the tax is going to be formally assessed. New York State cracks down on payroll cards. The Empire State recently rolled out new regulations on payroll cards, which are used by an estimated 200,000 workers in the state and often carry hidden fees and penalties. The new regulations limit the fees associated with the cards and require employers to provide workers with a written notice explaining their rights. Employers must also list locations of fee-free ATMs near where the employees work or live. Employers cannot pass along the cost of the cards to workers or receive kickbacks around the use of the cards. Ohio's medical marijuana law goes into effect. This month, Ohio became the 26th state plus the District of Columbia to legalize marijuana in some capacity. The law addresses many employment issues head on, stating that employers are not required to permit possession of medical marijuana in the workplace or accommodate the use of marijuana. The law also makes clear that an employer can terminate or choose not to hire someone based on medical marijuana use. While employers in the state will want to be aware of the law, it shouldn't require any major policy adjustments. The Ninth Circuit says Private Attorney General Act waivers can be severed from agreements. Arbitration agreements between Uber and its employees are enforceable once again after the Ninth Circuit largely overturned a district court ruling. The lower court held that the agreements were void based on public policy because they contained a PAGA waiver. On appeal, the Ninth Circuit found that the PAGA waivers could be severed from the agreements and that the rest of the agreement is still enforceable. Now it's time for our tip of the week. Will Hansen, Senior Vice President of Retirement Policy for Eric, is here with some advice on preparing a benefits program in advance of the Department of Labor's overtime rule. The Department of Labor's final rule increasing the overtime exemption threshold to $47,476 will not only have an impact on the wages an employee receives, but also the benefits that they receive. In advance of these changes taking effect on December 1st, it's important for companies to review their benefit programs. First, determine whether or not there'll be an increase in the overtime wages that the company provides, as well as whether there'll be an increase or decrease in salaried over hourly employees. Next, look at the financial impact that this change in workforce could have on your benefit programs. Lastly, employers should also look at other benefit programs, such as paid leave or commuter subsidies, to see if there'll be a change in the cost of those programs. Thanks, Will. That's it for Employment Law This Week. Thank you very much for watching, and we'll see you next time.